Whilst Namibians have been reeling in the successes of our current Olympic athletes, some of our Paralympic athletes feel a little left out. Remember the hype around Jana Benson, the first woman to win a gold medal for Namibia back in 2012. Bethany Woodward, just 19. She's in with a chance of a medal tonight. But uh, this will be the favourite, Joanna Benson, 29.39. Uh, qualifying time was her best time so far this season. She qualified with a personal best. Has she saved something for the final? My money's on Joanna Benson with Bethany Woodward to get silver. Uh, but this is uh, also an experienced runner, Maria Seifert, 21 years of age from Germany, 29.87, her season's best. We're getting uh, tweets of support for Joanna Benson. What, what are they saying, Natalia? Anya Carstens uh, from Namibia is saying good luck to Namibia's Johanna Benson competing in the 200 metre. And there's Victoria Kravchenko. So Joanna Benson, she's in lane five from Namibia. And the reason I'm tipping her is because I always think form is important and she set her own personal best, uh, which was the season's best personal best in her qualifier for this. So uh, provided she hasn't given it all in the qualifier and she's kept a bit back, she should be okay. Now runners in this race, some will start in a kneeling position, some in a standing position. It's a, a matter of choice and they're off. It's the women's 200 metre final, T37. This is for cerebral palsy runners. And Joanna Benson in the blue going extremely well. So too Bethany Woodward from Great Britain on the inside. Joanna Benson's going extremely well. But uh, on the outside, the Ukrainian girl, Krechniak, is going very well. It's Krechniak of the Ukraine in the lead. Joanna Benson from Namibia is coming back. Here comes Benson. Benson from Namibia absolutely flying. Benson of Namibia is going to get it. The Ukrainian girl's tying up. Benson of Namibia gets it. And Bethany Woodward of Great Britain gets the silver. And it was too close to call for the bronze. But Joanna Benson timed that beautifully. Loads of people uh, cheering for her, watching on TV in Namibia. And... Uh, that's a great result for her, and she's won a gold medal for Namibia. She's having an absolutely fantastic Paralympic Games, and uh, if she ever gets out of that woman's embrace, she will do a lap of honour. Don't know if that's her mum or a coach or whoever. It's a regional record, 29-26. Joanna Benson, congratulations, girl. You're the new Paralympic champion. Well done, Namibia. Yes, Jean Sutherland from Namibia also sent in her best wishes. If you're watching on TV out in Namibia, send your congratulations to Joanna Benson. We are on at Paralympic. We'll read them out. Tell us whereabouts in Namibia you are. And we'll give you a mention because a great night for Namibian athletics, Joanna Benson. For cerebral palsy runners, you can see uh, that uh, cerebral palsy runners do often tend to tie up in the, the last bit of a race. And you can see the Ukrainian girl looks to have it won there. And then she's just uh, just tying up there, just getting tired. Did she hang on for bronze? We'll have to wait and see. I don't think she did. Joanna Benson, the winner though. Bethany Woodward uh, in second place with a time of 29.65. And the German, Maria Seifert, just crept past to get the bronze medal, 29.86. And poor old Oksana Krichniak who was leading for so much that race, uh, doesn't get anything, 29.89, except she does get a new personal best. Jenny McLaughlin of Great Britain coming over the line in fifth. Kravchenko of the UK in sixth. Bardi of Tunisia, seventh. And Sinazar of the Ukraine in eighth place. And James McKindo is also tweeted in to say, what a race by the Namibian, making Africa proud. You may recall all the attention she got when she won with government even buying her a crib. Nearly a decade later, it seems Johanna has been forgotten. My first medal was in 2010. Commonwealth Games, that was 100 meters, a bronze medal. My life right now is just to progress hard. And since Training and walking is very complicated, but I'm coping with it. 
and I'm a HR assistant at Angana Seafood, and I'm working for for five years now. Then actually, I'm working from Monday to Friday, eight up to four o'clock. So from four to six is my training time. I'm training actually at the Walvish Bay Private School. There is a stadium there where I train with my other athletes. I I did compete in netball championship that was in South Africa, and I've qualified for the world champ. I not for the world champ, but for the Olympics, Paralympics games that was supposed to be in Tokyo. 2021. Actually, what I heard is they supposed to only take the three best athletes, so they didn't choose me. But I'm glad for the other people that went. It was very, I was very disappointed. All the time, you have been told you have qualified for the games. And suddenly, after two months or one month before the competition, said no, it's coming up. They'd all take the three best athletes. Actually, they didn't call me, but I just read from the newspapers, Facebook. She was branded a Namibian heroine and brought the gold medal home. This week, I chatted to gold medal Paralympian Joanna Benson about how her life has been since she was all over the headlines just a decade ago. I asked her to describe what she experienced returning to Namibia as a heroine. When I finished my heat, I came first in my heat. And then the same day, same night, we went for the final and then I, I knew already the gold was mine. And I took the race. Everyone was nervous, scared of each other. And I just enjoyed myself and finish the same fest. <sighs> nervous, shaking, everything was just... It's an amazing experience, you know. You are... You are meeting the world athlete, the best athlete, every type of athlete you are competing with. It was amazing. And after finishing the, 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 the competition and the race, and I was so proud to hear our national anthem for the first time. And the, the thing is also that Frankie was the one who handed over the medal to me, and that was a very amazing moment. I asked Johanna Benson just how Frankie Fredericks inspired her. He was the first person getting a silver medal for Namibia. And I think it was 1992 Olympics. I don't know which year and which, in which country was it, but I know he got the silver. And he was also competing against the world athletes. And for him, it was also amazing watching his race. I also asked her to describe the mindset required to compete in the Olympics. After the competition, and I have received my medal, and because my mind, I switch off and during those uh, competition time, I didn't went on Facebook or WhatsApp or any social media. I just, I just stay to myself and focus on my competitions and focus on myself. And afterwards, I just, when I went on social media, people would congratulate me for my achievements and, you know, Family members who told me that, no, we are waiting for you at the airport, so don't be surprised. The first person I saw is my mom. My mom, my mom and my family. From there I saw the rest. And when I get off from the plane, 
but like I was in another world of you see, imagining how thousands and thousands of people waiting for me with flowers and gifts and everything. So it was amazing. I got a, a, a diplomatic passport in a house, the one that I'm living in now. And uh, our mayor, previous mayor, Terry Klassen, he also hand over the street to me. I was so excited, experiencing. Now, first four years, they helped me, but from now on, it's, it's me who's doing everything. No. My family helped me because I told them the salary that I'm getting from my work is not enough, so we have to help one another. Actually, I'm... Um, I'm having one elder sister and one younger sister. And my mom, only ladies in the house. It's better, better than, than the location where I used to stay. In the location we were not having water and electricity. But now here yeah, it's, I have everything. I got, I got some donations from some companies, furniture companies, and I just bought with the money that we promised to give in. Some furniture with those monies, and I'm grateful for that. Hard work, hard work, and the temptation and respect and most of the time is your mindset. Most of the time I used to tell my other athletes in life there are three more important things. Believe in yourself, have faith, and be positive. Joanna explained that there is not a lot of money available to athletes and that they are dependent on sponsorships to sustain themselves as athletes. Yes, I am thinking that it's just a government, like it's just a pocket money to you go and spend with after a competition or buy for yourself something when you're rich. Oh, actually the, the, the sport commission are the ones who's organizing those stuff. I asked Joanna whether she feels she's been forgotten or not. No, I don't think they've forgotten me. It's just that they are now focusing on on the two other athletes. No, actually, I will go for the Commonwealth Games next year. There's a Commonwealth Games in England. I also asked her whether she thinks she can do it again and bring another gold home. Yes, I can bring it. Another dejected athlete. My name is Denzel Gavene, all the way from Ucho. I'm born in Hindu, grew up in Ucho. I'm 27 years old. Uh, I started with my athletics 2017. Uh, my uncle introduced me to the sports, so I went and met with Coach Richard. We were in the meeting, and then from there, that's how I started doing my athletics. And the thing that motivated me is when I was in primary school, I, I was doing sports and then they said, no, I cannot do it because I'm a disability and you don't want to be in trouble because I'm a government property. So that's how I got my opportunity to do sports now because for us, we can also do sports as a disability. That's my chance. So from there, I just started with my athletics and my sports. So now I am a para-athlete. Um, so I started going out of Namibia with sports uh, 2018, South Africa, uh, Bloom for Name, and I won the two gold medals. Then again, 2019, I went with sports again, athletic, 2019, uh, Stellenbosch. Then I got the silver and bronze. So from there, I proceeded, I went to the training camp, for a, for a month in Swakop, 
bungalows, guest house, they would been there for a month. And then from there, we went to France, Paris, so there, 100 meters, I got third place, and 200 meters, I got second place. And then from there again, November, we went to Dubai. So from there, uh, from there, I didn't do my best, so I came out last. So, but I did my personal best. So, yeah. Another dejected athlete, Denzel Namene, is on the verge of giving up on his dream of bringing home an Olympic gold. Just because of the environment in which athletes, especially Paralympic ones, have to suffer. To be honest, it's, it's a very good thing as an athlete to be so far so good, but the, the most thing that is uh, the, how the, the salary, because they, they, they say that no, what about competition in France? Like in France, they say if you get first place and second place, you are going to get money. But from there, we got our first and second places and third places, but we didn't get anything. So even when we went to, to France, we didn't get pocket money. When we came back, we didn't get anything. And in Dubai, we also went, but we didn't get pocket money. We only got $3,000, $19 as we came back, like after a few days or a week. Let me say, from there, because they said now we are international para-athletes, but still that's the, the, the salary we are getting. It's not even every month or any, for every competition you are going, but it's not about every competition you are going. You are not getting anything. It's just that when you are lucky or something like that, or when they feel like giving, that's the time that they are giving money. Namibians, they don't take disability sports as a serious sport. But when it comes to like Masilinge, they, they take it serious and you can see that MTC sponsor them and we never had MTC sponsoring us with that kind of things and you no know, like advertising us also like when you're going for competitions like Masilinge stuff where advertisement and everything. And even we, we can even see when it comes to even Namibian soccer team, they support it and they sponsor it with everything. But for us, it's, it's, it's not that easy. Because, but we are the only athletes that bring the, medal, the most medals in Namibia, but they don't take us serious and they only take us as a joke or something because you only hear that no, there's no money or something like that, etc. and so on. So you can already see how they, they behave and act and their, their advertisements and everything they are doing. And if they will take it serious, you could have like support us and give us money and to, to focus on our training and everything and competitions, but they don't take it serious. They just there on their own. But when it comes to missing and stuff, they were very focused. They were serious about it and they showed it like even on television. But for us, they don't show it on television. They only show it training and how we are training and that's it. But competition, they don't show it even. So, yeah, uh, for, for like for us, like, like for, for me, I've been struggling like a few of my athletes. They, they've been struggling for places to stay and so we have, we have been requesting for, 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 for like a, 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 a house, a club, club house for the team, for the team is to go stay there, so stay together and from there it's very easy even for us to go to training and morning and afternoon and everything so on. But the thing is that everyone lives now, far each other in distance, so you have to walk by foot, how many, two, three, four kilometers from your house to go to training and after training you have to walk again back and you are tired and we even requested that for, for three years, the, the cab and everything for us to get the cab, but they didn't even do that. They said they would do it, do it every year, but till now they didn't do anything. So it's very tough for us. So the main thing is that you have to eat healthy, very healthy, healthy food. And then you, you, need, you need even more training. So for, like for us, it's, it's very, very, very hard because they don't take us serious. So we just have to stay there, you have to eat the food, you have to get at home, and so on. Yeah. yeah, so what food do you get at home? What, do you, what are you eating currently? What uh, should you be eating? Oh, okay, I eat most of pop and flakes and so on. What should you be eating? Uh, you should be eating like uh, spinach and 
vegetables like, like carrots and all those things. So the nuts help the food that you have to eat. Again, even vegetables, fruits, yeah. So as an athlete, how do you earn money in this country? Uh, you only get your, your government pension money, that your disability pension money. You get every month because of your disability. That's how I survive for me. And I thought that my sports, that so far even, so far that I've done, done so good, I will get almost like every month or every competition that I'm going, I thought I'm gonna get money and the medals that I brought for, for the country, I thought I, I will get money, but still no, I didn't get money. That even not more than I, I, I want or to help myself to eat healthy and the place to stay and to move to training, coming and going. And yeah, and then mostly I even like for me myself, I need running gear, like techies and training shorts and everything. I don't have them, like I lost my running gears and then techies, so I have to buy myself. But for us, we have sponsors, the people that have sponsored us, send for us techies and running gears and shorts and everything. But still, we didn't get them. We even asked them to give us, but they don't want to give us. They just keep quiet. They say, no, we'll give you, but still now they didn't give us. It's like they have the favoritism people that they are giving and so on. Uh, like for our coaches, you can see that they, they have their favoritism and you can even see that the coaches, that the coaches himself, he doesn't have the trust or he doesn't believe you go so far. But in the helpful of yourself and you believe in yourself and in grace of God that you, you, you train so hard and even for yourself, yourself, you believe in yourself that you win and become something. So far, so good. But and then like you went so far and so good and you win like in break broad medals, but still the coaches doesn't believe and doesn't believe in you. And the, the, the corruption that they're having is the, money issues and techies and everything and you can already see even when it comes to awards they don't put us in awards and they only put the people that are already having money and that are already on top i see the difference is the Marcelinga staff they even got the car to tour to tour around the country around namibia that joanna benson didn't get okay and the sponsors like for how many years that she's gonna get sponsors and the difference is that Joanna Benson brought a gold medal and then Masilinga brought a silver medal. So, but Masilinga is having more sponsors and more uh, money that she got from, 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 from the sponsors and everything. But you can see already the, the difference between Masilinga sponsors and Joanna Benson and everything so on. So we just have to take the things serious about disabilities. They, they just have to take us serious and you have to start coming to end every small competition, start uh, promoting already or showing the person how, how he started the training and everything and focus on the taking videos and those things, how the people started and so on. Because you never know that the person is going to be a champion. This, they like for us in Namibia, they only take the person serious when the person wins or goes overseas and win medals. That's the time that they take the, the person serious. But from there, if you don't go overseas and everything, when you're in Namibia winning competition, you are not a big name to Namibia. As long as you don't bring medals or you don't go overseas, then you are nothing in Namibia. Okay. For us, we train five days a week. And we train like from three to six. So for us, it's, and it's, it's very good. But for, for me, as yes, yes, I want to be a world champion, I want to train twice a day. Then so that I must be stronger and faster. So the, the most things that we need is that we need a clubhouse to stay in and for all of us to be there so that for us we must wake up in the morning and train in the morning. After training in the morning, we, then we rest and then we go back again in the afternoon. That will make us very stronger. And the most important thing is that we have to eat healthy, very healthy. Because for me, it's, it's like 2019 when we came back, we had that we qualified for, for Paralympics. But they, they didn't even give us a request or, or call or SMS to tell us that no, you're not qualified because of this condition and what, what. They just went without, without saying anything. They just took each other three. They just took three at least and went without saying anything. So it's like making me feel like giving up because even for us, like we're not working, that are depending on the pension money that 
that is 1,300, it's, it's very tough because that is not money for us. So now that we thought that these sports will take us so far and we're going to stand in a good condition to support ourselves and eat healthy and train harder, but still nothing that we get here. So it means like you make me feel like giving up. But I know that with God's grace and someone that can hear us out will become someone as a champion. I asked him what challenges he faces as a Paralympic athlete in Namibia. Then the best coach that I had was, was, was coach Barbara Hernandez from Cuba. She was a very, very best coach. And when she was there, I trained very good. This is so far that I went so far with her and through her training until 2019, uh, Dubai, the last World Champs that I went to. And she, and she believed in me. But now the coach that I have is, is really not not that good because sometimes they come with their problems and taking off their problems on us and and he's having favoritism and he doesn't have that belief in you that you're gonna be a champion one day. It's just like maybe he's just doing it because he's a coach to do it and everything so on. Yeah. And with that, it's a wrap. Thanks for watching.